Hello and welcome back to another Craig and Dave Unscripted. So I uh, thought today uh, we'd talk to you a little bit about our Craig and Dave Cryptic Challenge. So what we're going to do, we're going to dive in. I thought, when did this actually go live on YouTube, Dave? Like oh, wow. Um, I wasn't prepared for you to ask me that question. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's called Unscripted. <laughs> I know. I'm ready for many things, but I'm not ready for that. Let me have a have a quick look, see if I can sort of work it out from our um, unscripted thumbnails. So, oh, I, I, I don't know. I can't, I we can't tell you. It in. We slipped it in as part of um, a Ministry of Silly Algorithms update, didn't we? And that feels like a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. it feels, could be episode 23. That was the last time we did yeah. a Ministry of Silly Algorithms update. So that was... What one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks ago, something like that. Okay. So I feel about nine right. Weeks. Right. So anyway, yeah. So over two months ago, we 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 slipped in under the radar um, at the unofficial launch, I guess, or the official launch of our Craig and Dave Cryptic Challenge. And for those of you that missed it, you'll know that our unscripted videos start with a little sort of 10 second intro, but we doctored one of our intros and uh, we're just going to play it to you now for those that missed it. So this was how uh, I think we said video 23 was launched to the community about two, three months ago. We have infiltrated Craig and Dave. Hidden across their various websites are these and make symbols. Hunt down all 16, solve my challenges, and we can speak some more. Mm. <laughs> you know, people said that was very cringe, and it, it was very did. it was you. <laughs> wow. Whether that's me or not, we'll have to get on to in a later part of this video series. So who who the mysterious man is, because that's his title, the mysterious man, and what that's all about. So we, we, we launched that out there uh, nine weeks ago. We deliberately made no fuss over it. Directly following that, we launched into a standard Craig and Dave video, announced some winners of a, a Ministry of Silly Algorithms, and made no reference to it. But that was our official launch of our um Craig and Dave cryptic challenge. So I'm going to take this first one because we are before actually you, going to, yeah, go before on. Before you get into that though, Craig, I, I'm right in saying, aren't I? Actually, that was our second launch of the cryptic challenge because the first time we launched it, which was quite a long time ago now, it was, it was too difficult for people to even kind of get that initial hook. Do you remember? Oh, right. Well, yeah. So years ago, we did actually launch a Craig and Dave Critchett challenge. I, right. Yes, this this is true years ago. And people did attempt it. But I think access to even discover that the challenge existed was so obfuscated and so well hidden that <laughs> so few people found it. Yes, that, that was it. This was way back in, a, and if you're a new student, you won't be aware of this, but back in our original videos, uh, our original A-level videos, we had um, very pale grayed out binary messaging hidden in to the uh, front screen of our videos and of course it was an image and you watch it as a video so you couldn't cut and paste it from the screen and we had something like 200 videos in a level and if you bothered to type everyone in you'd got to a hidden URL, and, and no, <laughs> nobody found it I mean, some people did there was even a little discord server we were alerted to at one point or a little group but yeah it was it was it was too it wasn't that the challenge itself was too difficult it's that finding it in the first place was ridiculous so we decided this time no we're, we're going to be a bit more in your face with this we're going to show you that something's up here and um we'll get on to what the mystery man actually said and how the challenge evolves in a minute but um yeah so essentially what yeah what, what was the cryptic challenge it, it was a series of fun puzzles and activity sort of loosely based around obviously the field of computer science and the, the, the topics that you study just a little bit of a kind of community crowdsourcing fun activity and we'll be honest we didn't know when we made this new version because this is considerably bigger than the original one um we didn't know where it was going to go how quickly it would be solved and i think it's fair to say we've been um We've been quite impressed, haven't we? 
Yeah, we have. And and to be fair, this is entirely uh, your idea. And we, we'll get yeah. on to sort of where it originated from in a second. But it sort of resonated for me, partly because obviously, you know, cyber security and computer science and coding and the history of all that was is absolutely great. But um, I'm also quite fond of these computer games where you play them and they've got hidden things for you to find. And I'm not talking about little Easter eggs and simple things like that. I'm talking yeah. about, um, you know, there are encoded signals in some of the sort of audio clips that you might get from some mysterious object that you go and find in space. And, you know, if you put them through an audio analyzer, you realize that there's a hidden code and that sends you off to another planet somewhere. And then you discover something for the first time nobody else has discovered. Now, I, I, not invested enough in the games to spend the time, um, you know, doing that. But the the concept of finding something that's hidden that that's hidden really in broad daylight, but nobody's yeah. really looking for it, sort of intrigued me. And so when you said, "Oh, I'd, I'd quite like to do the cryptic challenge," I was like, "Yeah, okay, let's do the cryptic challenge and see see where it goes." And I didn't know whether we would go for years before yeah. anybody would sort of write to us and say, "Oh, by the way, I've solved your cryptic challenge." or whether it would be solved in a matter of hours. And, you know, we used to have those conversations about how long do we think it's going to take? Because um, I know that in the computer games I'm referring to, that uh, there are some things out there that have never been found by the community. And the developers have said, you know, there are things out there that have never been found. And they've been in there since the, the early days of the game. Um, and then there are other things that kind of get found almost immediately that the content gets put into the game. And so that, it was really intriguing to me. How long is it going to take? Now, before we get into um, how did the idea originate, I've just remembered something else, which is okay. we did have a little scare, if I remember rightly, um, in the early days, because it wasn't long after we'd done the sort of the little video intro to see what would happen. And somebody uh, wrote to us and said, oh, by the way, boys, um, here are all the URLs, and we were like, "Oh, oh, what? Oh, uh, uh, oh, what, what was that all about, Craig? I've forgotten." Yeah, that. So, okay, I've got a confession here. So, um, I was chatting to my brother, my my younger brother, about the new cryptic challenge we're creating. Because just like me, he's a problem solver, he loves puzzles, games, computer games, all that kind of like you know, sort of nerdy, geeky, discovery type stuff, escape rooms and all that. So I remember updating my brother and telling him about it. Little did I know, he then told um, a group of IT professionals that he does sort of gaming, board gaming and escape rooms with, that um, his older brother was making this multi-stage cryptic challenge on the website. And uh, we launched it. And uh, he popped the link to the video into a, a WhatsApp group, like a puzzle solvers WhatsApp group they have. <laughs> and within about an hour, a bunch of IT professionals had run scrapes and scroll, uh, crawlers on our <laughs> site. They'd, they'd gone through the site XML map. They'd found all the links. And James was like, yeah, yeah, we found everything. I'm like, yeah, you haven't actually solved anything, though, have you? You've, you've just used your IT skills. Out of that, though, did come a bit a little bit of knowledge from one of the IT experts. He, he, he let me know how to remove the hidden pages from our site XML maps so they couldn't be scraped as easily. But I, the first time I saw the email, I was like, we launched this yesterday and someone's just sent us practically every single stage. But it wasn't it, it wasn't quite as scary as I thought. Nothing had actually been solved. And of course, as you know, and we'll get on to it uh, in this video or maybe the later ones, I designed the challenge in such a way that you couldn't just simply find every page and say you were successful, you actually had to solve the puzzles and submit some kind of proof. So I was like, well, well done, guys. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. But yeah, that was a scare with the early days. <laughs> yeah. So let's hear a little bit more about the backstory here, Craig, because as I've already said, this is, was entirely your idea and I've just sort of run with it, really. And I, I haven't had any involvement in the, the creation of this. I've really sort of let, let you run with it. So where did this whole idea originate? Where did you get this concept of the cryptic challenge from? Yeah, I mean, um, 
if we go way back, it just comes generally from my fascination with this kind of stuff. So it won't surprise anyone to hear that, obviously, I'm um, a huge nerd and a geek, which are terms we should be proud of. <laughs> In fact, they're, they're, they are seen as very popular terms now, actually, whereas maybe they weren't. Um, so I've done a lifetime of puzzle solving, escape rooms, you know, playing D&D, &D, and that probably won't surprise anyone. Um, you know, designing treasure hunts when I was a kid and all that kind of stuff. And, and top secret, we, c we can't talk about this. You have worked at a funny shaped object somewhere in Cheltenham. <laughs> yes, I may have worked for a government agency that has a large presence in Cheltenham. That's correct. Uh, yes. Anyway, so, enough said, moving yeah. on. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll see a lifetime in that. But I know what you're getting at by this question. Um, so in my uh, previous school, um, I designed a cryptic challenge for my students. This is predates the days of uh, you and I sort of starting up Craig and Dave. And uh, in a very similar vein, it was um, launched very quietly, no fanfare. I, uh, I had a large, uh, a large Perspex table in the middle of my room and um, I placed some computing puzzles under it in, in posters and there was some binary and you know, ASCII and other weird symbols and all sorts of stuff. And then covered the tabletop in Perspex and uh, just didn't say anything about it. And of course, kids would sit around the table and do exercises and they'd come and join lunchtime clubs and all sorts. And people say, what, what, what is this? I'm like, I don't know. What is it? And, you know, after a while, obviously, it started to pick up and, you know, they started to solve it. Oh, I had so much fun with that. Because, of course, once you get a curious GCC or A-level student, realise this table that I've been working on for six months, this isn't, what is this? I'm like, well, Maybe, yeah, but that's binary. What do I do with that? I don't know. What would you do with that? Well, I don't know. I might just chuck it into a binary to ASCII converter and see if it gives me something in English. Oh, it does. And that's the hook. That's the hook. And um, that ran, actually, for three years. And I had a bunch of A-level GCC students who did really well with it. I, I won't go into detail with it. But the, the amusing thing was, is the tabletop was divided into four main sections and it appeared like the challenge was four major clues you had to solve. Um, the first two clues, the first clue gave you that, I remember this day, and it's, it's still there as far as I'm aware, by the way, at my old school. I don't believe it's gone anywhere. Um, the first clue, once decoded, gave you the sentence, this will log you on if you had a password. That's what it was. And they were like, well, what do I do with that? I'm like, I don't know. What do you do with that? Anyway, they decode the second clue, and the second clue was like, and this is your password. And they're like, well, that makes no sense. Uh, and so I wouldn't help them. And then one smart cookie went, well, clue one is this will log you on if you had a password. And the second one says this is the password. Well, maybe the first one is a username. That can't be a username. This would log you on if you had a password. Well, that's one way to find out, isn't it? Type it in. So there they are, you know, in, in logging into their school. Like, lo they log out and then they log without spaces. This will log you in if you had a password. Password. And this is my password. Enter. And the, the shock when the first student did it and suddenly discovered that they were logging on to a super secret user account, which, of course, I set up with a school technician years before and said, don't tell anyone about it. I don't want it listed in Active Directory, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, the first two clues were a username and password, which when typed in successfully on the network of my old school, logged you onto an account, which had a big background uh, wallpaper image that said, welcome to the school's cryptic challenge. And then, of course, they were like, it, it's that up and down. Like, oh, my God, I found it. Well, what do I do now? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I didn't even know that account was there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> of course, after a little bit of um, a little bit of trawling, what they did is obviously go to the home drive of this mysterious account to discover a single file, which surprisingly they couldn't delete. The permissions were turned off, so they double click it, and the password is password protected and asks for a password. And they go back, and and so it goes on, and so it goes on, and so it goes on. There was about 15, 16 steps to the cryptic challenge. And I think one of my A-level uh, students um, or group, they got really far and they got into double figures, the only group ever to do it. And um, but they never got to the end. And I I know you want me to say this last bit, don't you? <laughs> and I'm so, not gonna mention the, the thing that sort of <laughs> the thing that made me raise my eyebrows with all this, because you know, that's you know, that's pretty good stuff. It's 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 a good little piece of inner 
innovative sort of teaching and learning, you know, a little bit of extra that the, the, the teachers do. And let's be clear here. These were ordinary desks in the middle of a classroom. Craig had printed some stuff out. He'd put that um, on the desks and then he'd got DT to uh, put a piece of clear acrylic over the top of the desk. So there's nothing special here. But the whole yeah. point of the acrylic, obviously, is that you could see the challenges through. But it was basically a desk and the students just thought that it was a display effectively it until one day they actually had a look at it. So anyone can kind of recreate this in their school. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But the thing that raised my eyebrows was when I heard where this challenge went. Now, when we say that Craig is a bit of a geek and a bit of a nerd, I don't think the audience have any idea what we're talking about here. Craig, uh, how did this challenge end? Right. Well, I can't do anything by halves, obviously. So, you know, it starts off by finding a secret website and then they end up going off to totally separate urls i'd bought domain names you know that went outside the school and and then they got discovered that they had to um go and discover a desk in english you don't know this but either by the way and they'd go up to english and they'd like excuse mr weir yeah i'm i'm really sorry can i come into your room and look under your desks and, like, what? <laughs> and little did he know that three years ago i'd walked in and i'd written a message on the underside of the teacher deck around all the chewing gum so they're going under his desk they're like there's a clue but that's not what you're referring to. It's the end of the challenge. So I honestly can't remember to this day whether it was 15, 16, 17 stages. But the very last stage had them going out onto the school field, which is vast, finding some little obfuscated corner of the school field that's kind of tucked away around the back of the Babington courts. They had some GPS coordinates, like, you know, within two metres. Uh, and I buried the proof that they'd won into a metal box i actually had a spade and i dug up part of my head teacher's field uh just got in the corner out the way you know i didn't dig up the start line of like you know a track or anything and i'd um and as far as i'm aware no one's found it and that buried metal box with proof that you've won the cryptic challenge from my old school is still buried in the field and i'm not going to mention the school because the last thing we want is um dozens and dozens of Craig and Day subscribers descending on my old school with um, forklift trucks and diggers <laughs> and <laughs> just digging up your field. But yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's, that's, that was my, that was my cryptic challenge. It, it would be fair to say it wasn't the first time you've been in a bit of trouble with the head teacher, because uh, I, I remember when you started your teaching career, Are you thought really it was this? a good idea in the summer holiday to go and put, um, well, to put some, I don't know what they were, some some colour onto your monitors so that you could identify groups of students and you could say the yellow group, the green group, and they're, <laughs> they're all identified yeah. by uh, something you've done to the hardware. Yeah, I don't think he was very impressed. <laughs> no, in fact, he even brought it up in my leaving speech. It was my NQT year and I took poster paint and painted all the monitors with different colours. And um, <laughs> I got called in and got told who did I think I was. And um, as a, as a, bright and eager NQT I spouted about um pedagogy and how, how this is going to help with small group learning and blah 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 and he turned around oh that's great but you need to ask your head teacher before you take poster paint to our monitors <laughs> <laughs> and he brought it up in my leaving speech 15 years later that like, cheers thanks for that anyway that's so that, that's where the cryptic challenge comes from <laughs> Right. Give us a gentle introduction then, Craig. Show, show us what this okay. is all about. So first thing, the cryptic challenge is, and this is why we're also so impressed that it has been solved. And uh, we're going to get onto that later. But there are so many parts to it. We cannot do it all in one video. So it, it, it very much was chunked into parts and there were kind of gateway mechanics built into the cryptid challenge that meant you couldn't unlock the next major part without solving the first so we're going to talk about the first bit um the first part of the challenge today the intro video which we showed you had that uh, the mysterious man uh in the anonymous mask there and what he said was we have hidden 16 omega symbols across craig and day's various websites hunt these down solve my puzzles and we can speak some more and indeed, what we had done, and I'm just going to uh, share the Craig and Dave homepage there, I'll just remove that banner. Uh, we literally did that. So uh, we, we hid um, 16 Omega symbols um, across our various websites, and we just expected users to go out there and find that's what we did. That was the hint. So here we're looking at the, and this is live now. We're not going to remove this, uh, this, this challenge um, in, in the near future. Uh, so it's still there now. Uh, Craig and Dave homepage, scroll down to the very bottom 
and there is a fairly weird misplaced spinning omega symbol. And when you click that omega symbol, it took you off to page one of 16 spinning omega symbol. Now, this wasn't actually a puzzle. This was kind of um, instructions on how to solve part one. So it just says hidden across the websites are 15 other pages you must locate. Each page will present you with a puzzle or a challenge. Solving each page will result in a single alpha numeric character. Once you have all 15 alpha numeric characters, add them to the end of this URL. So the idea being that there are 15 further Omega symbols scattered randomly across our thousand odd various web pages. And we do have that many when you take our students into account. And each one has a puzzle. Each puzzle gives you a letter or number. Once you have all 15, you add them onto the end of this URL. And um, presumably, you've solved the cryptic challenge. Of course, no, that'd be too simple for Craig. That, that means you've solved stage one. Um, so, and one thing we did decide is uh, to have a kind of different flavor and feel to each major part of the cryptic challenge. So this first part, if you like, the, the 15 initial challenges you have to find and solve, we decided should be grounded in the computer science kind of knowledge theory and understanding. And we went for the upper end, so we, we it's, it's A level. Um, and it really is, it's, they're not the sort of questions you expect to see in the exam, but they are firmly grounded in computer science theory. So what did you want to do, Dave? Just step through all of them, have a look at a couple or? Oh, let's just have a have a look at one. As you say, they're grounded yeah. in theory. So let's let's pick one and, and talk about how it's grounded in theory and what it did what it did yeah. for you in terms of solving the challenge. Okay. I'm not going to show all the pages where the Omega symbols are located because some people might want to find them themselves. But so here's an example, though. I will show this one. So here's another page on our main Craig and Dave website about the team. Pretty photos of all of us. And again, down there is an Omega symbol. Now, this one actually launched you off to the first actual challenge. So here it is. And you'll notice we deliberately put here page two of 16, because of course people could find these Omega symbols in any order. They, they, are, they are scattered across all our various Craig and Dave domains, our student sites, Smart Revise, and you could find page nine of 16 first, but at least it told people. And it was another, sorry to jump in, it's another gateway here into the challenge. We wanted to make this challenge more easily accessible. Our first one was too difficult. So if you hadn't watched our video and seen the mysterious man and his instruction, it didn't matter. We knew after time, someone was going to come across one of these 16 spinning Omega symbols. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on it. And when you do, you're going to see, oh, this is page nine of 16 and and off the challenge. And that is what happened. But this was um in, in order of designing it. This was the first one. <laughs> Solve this challenge to receive a single alphanumeric character. Don't know what to do with this character. Hunt for more Omega symbols. And that's the same on every single one of these 16 pages. There's then an incredibly helpful hint. <laughs> so every page had a hint. This one says simplify. And um, there you go, Dave. I don't know how many of these you've seen. That, that, that's that's all they get. That's all they get. That yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, to put this into a bit of context for everybody then. So if you're an A-level student, you will recognize this. Okay. And as, as Craig said, although it's open to everybody and anybody, and, and, you know, we've even had adults that are not associated with, with education <laughs> getting involved in this. Um, yeah. But if you're an A-level student, then you recognize this. You might not be able to solve the problem, but you recognize it. You recognize this as a simplifying Boolean algebra um, question. And what we've done helpfully here is we've got the OCR notation on the top. And then we've got the AQA notation underneath because you could be studying, you know, OCR yeah. exam board or AQA exam board. And we thought it was a little bit unfair if we only showed you the symbols for one of the two exam boards. So that's that's what we've got here. But in essence, what you're doing is simplifying this Boolean expression. And without going into a whole ton of theory about it, let me just sort of show you the first couple of bits here. So that uh, fancy little symbol, I don't know if you can highlight it for me yeah. on the left there, Craig, that yeah, fancy yeah, yeah. little symbol on the far left, that one oh, there. I can't, because right. these are PNGs, but yeah. That oh, they're one. PNGs, but anyway, the one that you're pointing at, that means not, that's the symbol for not with, uh, with OCRA level. 
And then in brackets, you've got then another not symbol. So you've got the not of the not of something, okay? And basically, that would cancel out those two knots. So you're, you're able to go through the steps of simplifying Boolean algebra in order to simplify that down. I'm going to guess, Craig, into one of the variables you've got. I'm guessing the alphanumeric there is either going to be G or it's going to be Q. Um, or it's going to be K, or it's going to be Z, I'm guessing. Well, you you are correct. And of course, when designing these challenges, not only do I want them to be quite extreme, so this is fir firmly bound in the theory that exists in A-level, but you won't see a simplification expression like that in an exam. <laughs> So not only did I want it to be bad, not only did I want it to be quite an extreme example to be difficult to solve, I had to make sure I got it right. <laughs> because, you know, one missing bracket and it won't do what I wanted. Now, this returns G. So I'm not going to go through this in depth, but I used a lot of different sources. And uh, I've got a number of Boolean simplification tools uh, that I have bookmarked, as teachers would. But here is actually the expression. And lo and behold, it uses a different notation again, the one that OCR and AQA uses. But that is the expression, I assure you. And um, you click go and it goes away and solves it and it gives you all the uh, all the various bits. And there it is. The minimal form of that expression is indeed G. So you know, I had to verify the answers to these multiple times. Let me just pop back to that one. So, yes, indeed. Once you solve that problem, what you got was a G which was one of the 15 characters, or the first, indeed, of the 15 characters that you needed to uh, solve part one of the cryptic challenge. Although I was hoping people would think that would be the cryptic challenge. And then when they solved it and went to their winning screen, they'd be like, oh, <laughs> we'll get to that. So that's um, that's that one. Let's look, at, uh, let's look at another. I don't know if we'll go through all of them. Today. So here's the, here's the second one. Exactly the same, uh, so part three of 16. Exactly the same intro, you will get a single alpha mean character out of this. And the hints this time were traverse and ASCII. So I think you might okay. have seen some of these for the first time, or might, you might have forgotten them, Dave. I'm, but yeah. I'm seeing all of them for the first time, Craig, because I, I, like I said, this was your baby. You did it. You put it all together. And I was far too busy working on other Craig and Dave materials, you know, for smart advice. And we've got you mean stuff that edition. actually makes us money as opposed to what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, I, I'm working on a second edition of the algorithms book at, at the moment. And so I, I didn't really have time to get involved. I just sort of let you run with it because it's the thing that you were interested in. But so I'm seeing these for the first time as well and, and i'm i'm <laughs> people won't believe me but it is true I'm, I'm gonna have a guess at what i might do with this okay so if you're telling me that the clue is ascii and i'm seeing the number 84 um at the root of that tree i'm yep. instantly thinking that must Sorry. be whatever the character is for number 84 on the ascii table is is what yep. i'm guessing and yep. then I would just apply that logic to all the all the other numbers. So I'm guessing those must all be ASCII, ASCII values. Now, the fact that I can see a 32 in that tree, it's just caught my eye. Yeah. I know, because I'm a bit of a nerd myself, that 32 is a space in ASCII. So if you're putting a space in the tree, I'm thinking this must be a sentence of some kind um, or, or maybe a couple of words or something like that. So I'm thinking, right. So I know it's ASCII values. I know there's a space which tells me it's probably a couple of words or a sentence. And I I know how to traverse a tree because from A level, I know that I've got breadth first traversals that I could look at. I've got depth first traversals that I could look at. And in terms of depth first traversals, I've got pre-order, in-order and post-order traversals. So what I would basically do Good. is I'd say, right, I've got four traversals there. I'm going to traverse this tree um, in each of those traversals, converting the numbers into their ASCII characters, and I'm going to see what words and sentences I get out of it. I think that's the logical approach I would take to solving this problem, but I haven't got a clue if I'm right. Wow. You should take computer science, Dave. That's quite logical. <laughs> that's good. And the thing that I accidentally dragged onto the screen there while Dave was talking, which I didn't mean to, is obviously as part of all this work, I actually solved every problem as part of designing it. And then resolved scratch with, with Lankai. So I have the solution. 
conditions. And that's exactly what Dave is, uh, what Dave said was, was spot on. I mean, that's what it was. That happened to be a pre-order traversal. Uh, Dave spotted 32 as the space, and, and indeed it was. And what you, the sentence you got back was 22nd letter of the alphabet, okay. um, which off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure which one that is. <laughs> but yes, this, this gave you another letter. So spot on, Dave. You would have been good at this. Mm, well, these are the easy ones, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> there are there are some there are some stonkers in here, yeah. Right. I do um, I do remember one. I will be completely honest with the with the community. When I say I'm seeing this for the first time, you did share one with me. I think as part of a QA procedure. I don't know how quickly you yeah. could get to this one. Maybe it's coming up in a future episode. But the one I remember you getting me to QA was. It showed, I went to a web page and I saw a web page and you were like, right, you know, what's the answer? And I'm like. I don't know what are you talking about and you were like move your mouse round and I was like ah right okay and then <laughs> I'm sure we'll see this at some point there was part of the page I had to click on in order to get the answer or something and I was like oh my goodness Craig are you sure this is this this isn't too difficult and you're like no 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 this will be fine <laughs> absolutely not right let's uh let's have a look at another one then here um <laughs> i think i've maybe have jumped a couple now but that's okay that's that's fine um yes i have skipped one but that doesn't matter uh so this one's at number five of six i'm particularly fond of this one again just um solve this challenge to receive okay. a single letter or number and the hint is f d e right and that's it now you know exactly i mean you're looking at instantly and you know exactly where this is going don't you <laughs> well i do because for a start fde even gcse students should recognize that fde is the fetch decode execute cycle so um we're going to do a fetch decode and execute on this i've got a processor um i've got some memory but i think the clue here is if i look at the decode unit i can see some binary codes and what they mean so for example zero 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 one is is add right so mm -hmm. let's have a look at the memory on the right hand side there so assuming that my program starts at address zero and i've got without looking at this closely i've got no evidence to suggest it wouldn't so i'm just oh, the program it. counter has zero 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 in it of course it does yes <laughs> thank you for that yes of course. So there's my little clue for that well done um so starting at address zero Okay, which incidentally is reserved for, for, for things. All right, but we're not getting into the theory now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm not sure your program should start at address zero, but we won't worry about that. Right, so 0101. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that in my decode unit and find out what 0101 actually does. And it looks like it's a load command. And therefore, the second part of that, 1101, must be... Um, either data or the address that I'm loading. Now I'm going to assume that this is not immediate addressing just because I'm going to assume it's direct addressing because that's what we tend to kind of start our teaching with. So I'm going to assume that I'm loading 1101. And if I translate that binary into deanery, well, I don't even need to because I'm assuming 1101 is an address. If I go to 1101, I'm going to load that number into my accumulator. And that number is 00000111. So that is going to be the number five. Uh, yeah. No, it's not. One, two, four, four, four. It's the number seven. What am I talking about? It's the number seven. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to load the number seven into the accumulator and I will have done the first instruction, and then I can go on to the next one. And I would basically follow those steps by looking at what the address of uh, the next instruction was, what the uh, the first part of the data is, which is the opcode, looking at that in the decode unit, using the second part of the data, which is the operand, and assuming that you're using direct addressing, um, that would give me that would give me my answer. And that's exactly correct. And that, that, that is spot on. And it's very similar to one of the activities we've actually designed in Craig and Dave, like walking walking out or role playing a, a living computer and a fetch can execute. So that problem is seven plus two. So the answer is nine. It's the first number they actually get in the sequence. So by this point, they've got a, a few letters and a, a number. Um, oh, here was the next one. Okay. So we can skip the intro. A few hints here. Uh, we've got hint RR hint quantum three and then a sentence which job leaves the last 
We've then got a bunch of boxes with some numbers above them. We've got a table with some colored bars. I mean, um, Dave's knowing instantly where this is going, just from RR and Quantum, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm kind of recognizing it partly, again, from an activity that we've got in the Craig and Dave resources. Uh, and again, this is firmly rooted um, in, in A-level. We wouldn't expect GCSE students to to be able to do this. But um, yeah, it's all to do with uh, process uh, scheduling and RR is round robin. Um, the quantum is the time slice. So we've got three units of whatever our units are as our, as our time slice in round robin. Then looking at the color boxes you've got there, A equals nine, B equals nine, C equals 27. I would just take a stab based on activities I've planned in the past that that is the number of cycles required for that process. So A requires nine cycles, but because the quantum is three, it's going to um, take three rounds of the uh, of the ready queue in order to get that fully executed. So I would probably um, uh, enter system at zero. So I would put a, a nine probably in the first box, and then the next one is enters the system at two. I put the B, I put the nine in, in the second box, and so on. And then um, I kind of count down. I've got three quantum for A to execute in. So nine minus three is six. That would stop executing when it's at six and it would go to the back of the ready queue. But of course, I'd have had to have queued up all the processes probably first. I'm guessing that's how you've done it. Queue up yeah. all the processes first into the ready queue and then execute a round robin algorithm on them until eventually all the processes have finished executing. And presumably I get left with something, but I have no idea looking at that, <laughs> what I'm left with. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, that, that that's precisely it. And again, I, I won't uh, bother switching and on screen sharing and resharing, but I've got it all worked out and worked through. And what you end up indeed is 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 e. So so that gives you e. So that's that's the kind of nature really of um the, the first fifteen sections. Now, I mean, we can go through them if people are, are interested. But I am conscious that we're up to forty minutes yeah. um on, on already. Think... But that's that's the go on. I think for today, Craig, we'll probably leave it there, like you say, yeah. in the interest of time. And I think what we'll do is we'll, you know, respond to the comments below. If you if you comment um, below that you'd like us to go through more of these challenges and what they were about, then we'll spend a little bit more time doing that. Um, and, and if not, then we'll kind of crack on to the next phase of it in the next video and yeah. explain what, what came after that. But so we do record... Go on, so we okay. do record these videos um, in advance uh, normally, okay? So if you are going to respond to this video and give us a bit of feedback on what you'd like, then please do that before Wednesday um, because uh, we'll we'll be recording these in advance, like like we say. But, yeah, uh, yeah we hope you find that that interesting. There's a couple more things we'd like to cover. Well, just, uh, just, before, with, we yeah, sorry, just before you do, Dave, what I was going to do, as I said, depending on your feedback, we, we can always step through those examples. But what I did want to do is just leave you with where part one ended you, because I do know we want to pick that up. So sure. in essence, as we say, you, you solve these 15 challenges, and we can always go through more of these as of interest. But what it gave you was that 15-digit unique code that you appended onto the end of a URL. And what I was hoping is that people would think that would take them to uh, a winning page, but of course it didn't. Uh, it took them to this page. So uh, this, oh, this, this is a famous one, isn't it? Yeah, this takes them to this page, which is the Craig and Dave logo with some, what appears to be Morse code in the bottom. When you decode the Morse code, it tells you to click on the tip of the third spike, which happens to be this one. That's the bit I couldn't do. I was like, what third spike? What are you talking about? Oh, I can't even find it now. Yeah, this is the one you got me to QA, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, it, it definitely works, I can assure you. <laughs> Was it that third spike? But yeah, one of these, one of these spikes in here then linked you off to a, another um, web page, and this time, ah, uh, I just, I do need to find it, Dave. Hang on. Uh, yeah, here you go. So when you clicked the tip of the third spike, 
it sent you off to another website. And this website, um, I'd registered the domain completely separately. So it's a non Craig and Dave domain. I, I'd registered a separate uh, website. Yes, it's telling me my uh, connection's not private now because there's no HTTPS on it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll skip that. But what they what they discovered <laughs> in essence um, was that it wasn't the end of the challenge it was just the start and they get taken to a website where the mysterious man reappears and congratulates them on proving that they are worthy enough to undertake the cryptic challenge <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's so many layers to this so we'll we'll look at that um in, yeah. in a future episode like like Chris says we're not going to go through the whole thing today we'll break it down we'll have a look at the second part next time unless of course you want us to go through more of the sort of approaches to solving the, the first 16 and we could do that too um anyway so in the interest of time let's just move on a little bit so winners okay yeah. so we have had winners okay people have written to us and the first time it happened it was a bit of a surprise and craig and i were like yeah. oh my goodness someone's actually solved it and our first reaction is oh they they must have cheated somehow because this is so this is really difficult and um actually no so we have had um, a group of students and their teacher be our first winner now subsequently um over the past couple of weeks we've had a couple more sort of write to us and say oh we've solved your cryptic challenge so what we'd like to say is the cryptic challenge is now officially won this one is kind of now over we're not going to take the pages down because if you want to explore it um and you know you want to, to see what that's all about then then go ahead um, it makes for a great sort of extracurricular club especially with the older students um so we'll leave the pages up but the competition itself which we didn't even tell people was a competition we thought we'd see what yeah. happened um is officially over so we've got our winners so please please you know you can write to us and say by the way i've solved your cryptic challenge that's absolutely fine and send us the form and you'll know what that means if you solve it um by all means but there are no sort of no more prizes that we're giving out um for the winners okay but the the winner that we got, we're going to get on an unscripted in a couple of episodes time once we've gone through some of the puzzles and uh, we'll be joined with some of the students and the teacher and we can talk about their approach to solving the puzzle, which is fantastic. But we have had a couple more as well that we're looking at, we're verifying. But if you've uh, if you've almost solved it, you haven't quite and you haven't submitted your form, I'm sorry, it is now too late. It's not yeah. an official competition because we're not going to go through all the rules and regulations of running proper competitions. You know, we don't want to get tripped up with the legalities of all that. It's simply, here's something that's a bit of fun for the community. And do you know what we've had a school um solve it and we thought wouldn't it be nice to give them a gift and so we've offered them the option of of, of different gifts from craig and dave we're not we won't go into all that now but um but there's there's that we have had winners so please it's now over okay <laughs> it is however however Yes, okay, I'll take this. Yeah, however, you see it's unscripted because Dave and I are like, you doing this bit? I'm doing this bit. <laughs> however, the future. Um, having seen the engagement from the community and the fact that these are quite fun activities and we can ground them in computer science and, you know, they build in all this sort of stuff we want students to have, resilience, computational thinking, problem solving, teamwork, all that kind of stuff. We have made a decision that this won't be the end of the Craig and Dave Chip Cryptic Challenge. We, we like the we like the feature. Uh, so we're going to be committed to doing some more of these in the future. They might not be quite as extensive and vast as this first one was. And as we um, walk through other parts of the Cryptic Challenge and subsequent videos, you'll, you'll see how long it was. Uh, but we think we want to do uh, some more of these. We won't necessarily tell you when we're going to launch them um so keep an eye on our unscripted channel keep an eye on our youtube channel keep an eye on our feeds our twitter feeds um but we do plan to uh, release new ones and um in a sort of similar sort of vein uh, i think we there's some merit to them and the other thing we're going to do is um once a cryptic challenge has kind of been solved, again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, we'll go through it. But we plan, I think it's fair to say, Dave, it's still early days, but I think what we plan to do is make all the resources for the cryptic challenge available to our subscribers. So, you know, all the components that made up the challenges, along with the solutions, the instructions, we'll package them all together and they'll be available. There will be no cost, it'll be an additional download. If you're on a premium subscriber, as the cryptic challenges get solved, 
you will be able to download the resources so that in future, you know, you can make use of those for, you know, fun activities, after school clubs, extracurricular, that type of thing. Is that, um, yeah. that's all still early days. Am I, is that an accurate reflection of what we've agreed? <laughs> yeah, it, it absolutely is. I mean, what we'll do uh, when we put them into the, um, into the members resources is we will, um, tweak them a little bit so that you don't have to set up websites and URLs and usernames and passwords and all the rest of it. We'll we'll come up with a very simple system. Maybe um, it'll be sheets of paper and in PDF format so you can do what you want with them. Um, and we'll probably give each sheet a little code in the top right hand corner or something. And so when the you know the student has completed something they can say can i please have sheet x nine three four three j and uh you know you will know that that's a valid sheet that you can then give them for the next part we'll probably do something like that so you don't need to have it set up in the way that we've got it set up but yeah very much we want to release uh the resources out there to the teaching community and we hope those of you that have uh, kind of embarked on it have really enjoyed it and like i say it's given you something for extracurricular um, activities and intrigue and interest in uh, computer science and computational thinking and uh, we we will do more so if you've missed the first one then um you know get involved in the next one and we're not going to announce it in the in the normal way um we will announce it in a cryptic way um but we probably in all honesty won't get to putting a new one out there until the new year we're going to be at bet <laughs> in january between the 19th and 21st of january so we're kind of very much um, planning for all that at the moment and so realistically we probably won't be releasing another one until the new year and we need to be a little bit sensitive to the fact that this will also be at a time when you'll be trying to get ready for exams either as a student or as a as a teacher planning your students for exams and we don't want to detract from that too too much um so we need to be careful and we need to be sensitive about it but um it, it won't be it won't be in weeks because we're, we're really really busy at the moment but we will do some more brilliant well um i hope you've all uh, enjoyed that um as we said um, we're going to go through subsequent parts of the cryptic challenge in the next couple of videos and explore um, some some more of the very, very different from part one. They're not sort of A level challenges. We're going to look at what we did and work through some of those. Uh, in a few weeks, we're going to have our first official winners on. So the students and teachers, they're just collecting appropriate permission slips. <laughs> so we're going to have those on uh, with us. Um, and until then, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, we'll catch you next week. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and reply. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.